Hi, I'm Luciano and today I want to show you how to make this fish that has a dynamic tail. Um, basically what you see here uh, is based on a demo I saw on internet uh, for a Cinema 4D dude and all it has is a bunch of bones, a bunch I would say uh, it's only four dynamically driven bones, a cage that has cloth and the fish and that's it. And there's one bone that actually contains hand keyed animation, which is this one. Okay, as you can see, has here some little keyframes that make him jump. And that's it. So um, without further ado, let's uh, just go get right into it. Here we are. We have a clean scene with just a fish that I named fish 001. By the way, the f this fish, I got it from um, Sketchfab. Uh, and the author, I don't remember his name, but I know I have it written down, so I'll put it down in the comments. Uh, and and here we are. So this is a clamfish, I think. Um, and what we'll do basically is we're gonna first add some bones that can deform it. So for that, I'm just gonna go Shift A, Armature, Single Bone. Um, this bone, because it will go inside the this guy, it will probably disappear, as you can see. So if I go into X-ray, you see that my bone has disappeared, or is inside the mesh. Uh, and I want to see him all the time, so I'll just go here and just make mark him as in front. There, no matter what uh, type of uh, vision uh, or viewport or I don't know how you call this, uh, I am, you're gonna see him anyways. So let's just go back to loop, loop dev because it looks pretty. Uh, and it's more, obviously it's nicer to work with pretty stuff. And I'm just gonna go change in, I'm gonna go to edit mode and I'm gonna change my pivot to active element so I can rotate it from the bottom. So rotate in 90 degrees. And I'm gonna place this first bone more or less uh, where, where the fish kind of stay still like if you see a fish swimming from the top um, usually I'm, I might be lying a lot but usually this kind of stays a little bit more stable and then the rest of the body is the one that kind of fly, uh, uh, shovels around or I don't know what the word is uh, swims basically so I'm gonna put my, my first one here so this is what's, what's gonna basically drive most of this part and is the one bone that's gonna move the whole fish basically and then i'm just gonna extrude a little bit more uh, a few bones extra i'm just gonna go like this and subdivide it and we'll go here and add a little bit more cuts that way i have more bones to actually work with and the fish can be deformed by them um by this same thing if i go here and select individual origins you can see that if i select them they give me like a nice curvature which is basically what i want um, so with this i can already kind of shape my fish to do like some swimming of sorts uh, probably it would be more interesting if i go and do something like that as well but we'll leave that to the physics it, we might not even achieve that so much but hey it's gonna look decent enough like if you put it in the background of your short film uh, like this and you see a bunch of fishes they're gonna look good believe me so now that we got this we're just gonna bind this uh, fish to the bones which are super easy to do just select the, the fish select the armature control p and then automatic weights uh, basically what this did it added to the arm to the mesh it added a deform and it also went and created weights for each of the bones. Uh, we could rename these bones, uh, but we're not gonna do it because it's just a simple rig and that we don't need to name them basically. Um, but we could, if, if we were professionals, we would. Um, so you can see now that I get uh, like a fishy fish that deforms magnificently, mostly with these fins coming out and everything. Uh, that's basically because the way it was built, um, it's not the most proper way it's a bunch of planes which makes it incredibly light um, and i could go in and start weighting 
uh, them to look better. But I don't care because again, it's gonna it's gonna be from really far. And if I would be doing this for production, for sure. But in this case, uh, we just wanna get the effect going on. So we got this fish. We got our main bone that moves around, and we just need some dynamics here for driving the rest of the fish. So for that, we're just gonna create a little cage. And this cube, we're gonna reset its position. We're gonna make it the size of the fish. I'm not even sure if this step is really needed, the, the making it the size and everything like that, a fit. Um, but I thought maybe if I do it some, uh, like this, we'll um, more or less uh, have an, a better idea of how, uh, how the, the physics would be more accurate because it's based on the fact that this here is moving this cube but what we're dragging is over here i don't know i just came up with that idea in my head and it kind of stuck and then i was like all right so, so nobody's gonna say no if somebody says i might change it and and do it do another tutorial on it but so far so good so i got my cube i'm gonna subdivide this that's why i keep a mouse around because subdiv subdividing stuff with the tablet is fucking impossible in this shit and now I am going to apply some physics. So also I want to make this uh, cube not be in the way all the time. So I just go here to the objects and you can see this, my, my properties are all scrambled because now they're in three columns, who knows why. So I'll just go hit in front. Obviously it's not the one that I wanted. I wanted this one wire. Um, and nothing's happening obviously because I'm in wireframe so I should be in loop dev or something like that and now this cube is wireframe weirdly enough if I am wireframe and this is set to wire I should see the fish uh, which I'm not saying uh, I'm gonna complain about that but anyways so now we got this so this cube um, again is the one that's gonna have some cloth so I'm gonna just add a little bit of cloth here Bam, cloth and I'm gonna press play. Oh shit, it's falling. So first thing I need to do is make sure that it stays with the bone. So how do I do this? First of all, um, for it to stay with the bone, in fact, the first thing that's gonna well, we have to do is make part of this be cloth and part of this not be cloth. So for that, I'm just gonna go weight paint. I'm gonna go back to have it not be something transparent, uh, wire framey. And I'm just gonna use this gradient down here, which is really cool, and put the strength to one. And make it linear, should be fine, exactly. And we're gonna look through an orthographic view, so everything gets painted in the same uh, direction and with the same sort of amounts. And I'm just gonna do something like this, maybe like that. There we go. So this is uh, influence one, and this is influence zero, and this is all of the the influences in between. Um, so what this will do when we go back to our cloth uh, settings, basically, is that I'm gonna tell it to pin to that group, and I should have named that group. So I'm just gonna do it now. Oh, there we go. So this is um cloth clothness pinning uh with the two two ends right so what this will do basically is will tell blender where uh to pin it so the 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 red part that we were seeing before is pinned on one which means that part will not move no matter what you do uh, meaning with the cloth and the zero is the one that's gonna be very clothy and and that's gonna fall so if I play again as you can see I pinned it maybe even too much so maybe we can tone this down a little bit so I'll just go here and then go to my cloth and see if we can maybe instead of uh, doing what we were doing before I can just assign Maybe remove some weight. I'm not sure how this works. Remove the selected vertices. No, we don't want that. We just want to go to weight paint and then 
maybe there's a way to just uh, add less weights to everything. I'm not sure. Mm, this is this is tricky shit, huh? Anyways, just just let's continue. So because now we have um, the the falling part, right? And if I play and start moving this around, nothing happens. But if I parent the, from this one to the bone, control P, but in this case go bone, you'll see that it moves with it. And if I press play, oh, it drives it. Oh, it's shaky. I think we don't need to lower the amount. I think it might be kind of all right. So it's working. And we got this simple setup that makes our cloth work. Now, what do we do is we could try and drive the fish directly with this mesh. We could, um, and wouldn't be very hard at all. Actually, the only thing I would need to do basically is push this up. So all of the vertices are in and then again, now I get this. And so now I'll just select the the fish even turn off the armature because this is another way just just so you know that it exists and use mesh deform and select cube and then bind now that it's binding bind dead not yet it's taking a long time but that's why i don't like it because for once it takes a long time now you see the fish should be moving with this stuff I'm just gonna turn on the armature. Perm, perm. Maybe now it works. Maybe it moves down with the bone. Yeah. So this works and works pretty well, pretty damn well. Um, the only the only problem for me for me with this is, as you can see, it's kind of stretchy in some ways, um, and makes it not so cool in that in that sense. And in the other problem is. Um, it's just deforming the mesh, uh, which could be easily heavy. And finally, the bigger problem here is that we're not moving bones. And because we're not moving bones, we cannot turn this into actual animation. Like we cannot bake it to curves and then modify it if we needed to. So makes it really like for the one trick and, and that's it. And that's not as useful. So instead of using this bullshit, I'm just gonna delete that and I'm just going to select my cloth, grab the last face, group it and create a new group called left back face. And then I'll select this, this bone and select this object and this bone last. Control shift C and I go dump track and dump track should be working, but we need to assign a vertex group. And this is something that blew my mind. I'd never seen this anywhere else before. You can constrain something to a freaking face or, or group of vertices basically, which is really cool. So I'll do the same with all of these other dudes by just going pose, constraint, copy constraints to select them. So all of them have the same constraint now. And as you can see, what's going on now is that this face is driving these bones. But because, but because uh, they're all pointing at the same place, it's a little bit stiff. Uh, so what we'll do about this is I'll just lower the influences and I just want uh, 0.75 here and then select this one, 0.5 and then 0.25. Bam. And now I play and this looks way more nicer. Woo, woo. So we're ready. Now, what do I have to do? I'll just grab the animation that you saw at the beginning that I have somewhere here. I think it's this one. Not this one, clearly, this one. There we go. And you can see the dynamics of the, the cloth are driving the bones and it works pretty decently, honestly. And 
because it's dynamic and because it's cloth, I can just like change my preset and it will to some extent change how it looks, the final result, you see? Uh, also, I have to say, the reason I use Dant track is because I figured out I had never seen, I've, I've never seen anybody explain what the fuck this is, but basically um, with the regular track two constraint, you have to specify an axis and it's easy for it to flip when it's in not like upside down, like when it's upside down or something or doing some weird rotations. And this one kind of worked out of the box and you I don't need to specify anything else but what to look at. So it's super easy to set up, super quick and works like a charm. Um, so as I was saying before, if now I wanted to modify the animation on the tail, um, but what I got, I like, and I want to make it like change stuff by hand, I could just go and press S3, bake action. I just write bake and then find the one that says NLA, bake action, and tell it to clear the constraints first. So it will delete this, those constraints, overwrite the current uh, action. That way it will add these keyframes to the current action, because in this case, I do have some animation information in that bone, which I want to keep. And Visual King, in this case, maybe it's not that necessary. So, but we'll just keep it there. And only the selected bones. I just hit OK. And as you can see, now I got my bones animation there. Bam, That's, it's that easy. Uh, I actually could also bake first the simulation. So then I get exactly what I was looking at. Um, so I'll do this uh, 45, right? Bake, bam. So now I know exactly that that is what I should get when I bake my action. And then F3, bam, 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 done. And now I don't have constraints in those bones. So whenever I want to change something, I can just go here, write X, Quater I hate this shit. Um, quaternions. And then now you see, for instance, this part where it bends a lot there and then it bends it bends to the other side. I could just like grab those those here, turn on my my uh, proportional editing. Even just like select one or like one here. Turn on my proportional editing make it really big because by default i don't know why it's so small super idiot and you see i can fix this and make it not go so much down or in fact if i use this maybe it's a little bit more you know what i mean so you can you can play around with this stuff and fix it and change it and make it more crappy if you want done I'm an expert on that part, making it more crappy. So there you go. You fish with a dynamic tail. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Remember to follow me, to subscribe to this tutorials, to check out lollipopman.com uh, for further tutorials. There's more reading stuff with uh, animated GIFs. There's um, my friend Omari, who is a lighter at Frame Store in Montreal and who's doing a monthly review or interview about uh, special pieces that have impressive lighting, uh, which is really, really cool. So I, I urge you to check that out. And that's it. See you in the next one.